What's going on everybody? This is Scott, also known as Chiching King, and today I'm going to answer the age-old question, how do I price my items for sale on eBay? And I'm going to go through an entire tutorial today and tell you exactly how we arrive at a price, and we're going to do that on the computer. I've come up with a couple of items that are pretty standard items. One of them is a clothing item and one of them isn't, that we can look up and try and come up with an idea of what we would sell it for. The two items we're going to do today, we're going to take and we're going to look up a pair of Levi's Orange Tab Vintage Blue Jeans, and we'll look up my microphone. So let's start with the Blue Jeans. Most of my tutorials start right here at the Seller Hub. I do have a video for how to set the Seller Hub up and where it's at, and if you need that, we can link that in the description for you. But right here, we're going to type in Levi's. When you're typing in your item, you want to be as descriptive as you can be, especially when it's something like Levi's because it's going to cover a lot of ground. But at this point, we're going to do a search. And there's a couple of things to notice with something like Levi's and that you're going to see a ton of them listed. Even with it as specific as vintage orange tab Levi's jeans, there are over 12,000 listed. And here's where most people look at prices and they try and price theirs. And that is not the way that you do this. There is an important number on this first page, but it isn't the prices of these jeans. These are what people are wanting to get. These jeans haven't sold. But what is important is that first number, that 12,000. That tells me how many are listed. But from this point right here, I want to go and I want to look at how many Levi's Orange Tab Vintage Jeans have actually sold. So on the left-hand side, we are going to scroll down until we come to the part right here. And we want it to show only the sold items. And when we click that, it'll bring it up. Now, the first number before we start looking at prices, the first thing I want to notice is that there are 4,700 sold. So that gives me a sell-through rate of the 12,000 that have listed. A little bit more than a third of those have sold in the last 60 days. And I think that that's a really, really important number to know because that's one of the indications we're going to use to price our item is how fast is this item selling? When we start getting down around 35, 40%, it's pretty competitive. There's a lot of them listed. And when you list yours, if you're at the top end of the price, chances are it's going to take a while to sell. But at this point, we've pulled up our sold listings. And it, what you want to do here is find some that are comparable to what you have whether that's the size or the condition or all of the above. And we try to arrive at what they have sold for. Now on this page, if you're looking at it, you're going to see all kinds of things here. And typically it's going to be arranged by those that have just ended. And that's good because you get current information, but you'll notice on the first one, these Levi's 517, there's a line going through it. And that means they did not sell for $30 plus shipping. The, the seller took a best offer. So every time you see this line going through it, the seller took a best offer. But what I want to do here is I want to scroll down and look at the jeans that are here. And I'm looking specifically for the ones that don't have a line through them. That tells me a very good idea of exactly what those sold for. So like this pair right here, these Levi's 560 blue jeans, they sold for $39 with free shipping. That's really important. If mine looked just like that, if they're the same vintage and they're the same more or less condition and oh, those are shorts, but same thing. If I'm looking at them and they're about the same thing that I have, I have a very good idea what they sell for, and I'm going to want to look and see how many of them have sold at that price. What that allows me to do is 
when I am pricing mine, let's say that there's 10 pairs that have sold and they've sold anywhere from $25 to $39 with free shipping. I already know that these aren't selling terribly fast because the sell-through rate is only a third or a little bit better. So if I need mine to sell fast, I'm going to price them at the lower end of that. If I think mine are a little bit better condition and I don't mind waiting, I'll price mine at the higher end of that. So I hope that makes sense. Let's do another example. Let's look up my microphone and we're going to look up the Blue Yeti microphone. So we're going to go right back up here to the top and type in Blue Yeti microphone. And we'll add the word used. And right off the bat, that first number, there are 827 of them listed. And I'm looking, oh, one thing to remember when you're in, um, when you're in eBay, if you've already done one search and you had already filtered by sold, a lot of times your next, next search is going to show sold items. So now I have 827 sold, but for me to know the sell through rate, I'm going to have to go down here and take that sold off. So 975 listed and there were 872 sold. That's getting very close to 100%. That's a good sell through rate. And so now I'm going to go through these and I'm going to do some comparisons and try and figure out exactly what I have. A lot of these, if you're looking at them, there's things wrong with them. But let's say that mine is in perfect condition and it works <laughs> and I, it's not hooked up to the base here, but I have the base. I have all the original stuff, but no box. So I'm going to go through and see, here's one that sold for $29.99 and here's one that sold for 30 with shipping or best offer. So it may have sold for less than that. Here's another one that sold for 30 or best offer. Uh, I mean, not our best offer, but plus shipping. And you notice that by and large, it looks like a lot of these sell for right at that $30 to $40 price. And it's almost 100%. So now, depending upon how quickly I want to sell this thing, if I price it at $30 with shipping, it's probably going to sell pretty fast. If I price it at $40, it might take me a little bit longer to sell it. That is how I arrive at a price. One of your considerations when you're selling an item is not just the price. It's how you come about that price, what it looks like in your listing. If we look at these Blue Yeti microphones that have sold, as I look, the one at the top up here had free shipping. The next one charged shipping. The next one charged shipping. And the next one charged shipping. And this isn't a shipping video, but when you are pricing your items, one of your considerations is how am I going to put that price together? If nobody else charges shipping, if everybody else has put it into the cost of the item, that's typically what I would do. Most of the time when I build my price, I do exactly what these or most of these have done is I put the price of my item plus shipping. And the reason that I do that, it allows me to send out offers. It allows me to run a sale and it allows me to accept offers without worrying about, did I cover shipping? Because I have done shipping separately. One of the most important things that you need to do when you are pricing your items is learn. <laughs> Over time, you're going to get better at it you're going to find out there, there are key words that you need to use to describe your item. The cost of my Blue Yeti would probably be more than some of these because I'm going to have fantastic pictures. I'm going to show a lot of pictures of it and I'm going to do a great job of describing it so that the buyer knows exactly what they're getting. Remember, I'm not just a reseller. I add value to the things that I'm listing. If I were selling a pair of vintage torn up jeans, I'm going to take pictures of those things that I know are going to attract 
the buyers that I want to sell through. Because remember, when we sell something, whatever this price is, whatever we're charging for shipping, when those buyers get that item, I want it to stay sold. I do not want any of this stuff back. When I sell it, I want it to stay sold. If I charge too much or if I oversell an item and it isn't what they thought they were going to get at the price that they paid, I'm probably going to get that item back. And that does, that does me no good whatsoever. The more you know about this, the better you'll be when you go out and you're, and you're shopping. It'll make you a better buyer because most of the money I make, I don't make when I sell it. I make it on the buy. I'm out looking for things and I've done my research and a lot of times I'll pull this up on my phone and I do the research right there. And that makes me more effective. It makes me a better buyer, which in turn makes me a better seller. So I hope this tutorial, as simple as it is, makes sense to you. I hope it helps you price your things to sell. I've got a lot of other tutorials coming up and I appreciate you guys always watching. I, I've had so much support and I appreciate you guys very much. I'm going to see you real soon on the next one. Bye.